Hi, I'm Chef Leander, and this is Small Kitchen Big Taste. Today we are going to make a big taste with fall mushrooms. If you can get to a farmer's market and get fresh mushrooms, uh, that would be awesome. I'm just using cremini mushrooms, some dried shiitakes, and that's it. But if you can get something a little more interesting uh, at the farmer's market, go for it. It'll be great. One of the things I love about the Instapot is that it has a saute function. And so I don't have to use extra pans like I would if I were using a crock pot. I've got everything I need right here. So it's turned on, the heat is coming up, and I'm putting in two tablespoons of butter to let that melt. Now, while that's happening, we're going to deal with the shiitake mushrooms. This is part of the magic of the recipe. So I'm going to put this glass weight that is usually for fermenting, but I'm going to use it here so that as I put the hot water in, boiling hot water, it doesn't float. And I'm just going to let that sit. I'm not putting in too much water over the top of the mushrooms, but that just lets them sit and lets them rehydrate. It'll take five, seven minutes. Now the butter is melting in the pot and I'm going to just break down the butter a little bit so it'll melt faster. So now it's melted and we're going to push in the onions so they will get cooking. As we've talked about before, when we put the onions in first, that allows them to start caramelizing. And what that means is the sugar in the onion is actually coming to the surface. And when you start seeing brown onions, you know that the onions have turned to something sweet. In many cultures around the world, onions are not seen as something that's savory. They're seen as something that's sweet. And that's because they cook a lot of them into their food. So we're going to let the onions continue to cook. You can see they're starting to get a little bit caramelized. And that means it's time to add the mushrooms. We're going to add the mushrooms all at once. Now as they cook, they will sweat a little bit. And you'll get some moisture in the bottom of the pan, which is what we want. So we're going to let these mushrooms cook in the butter and the onion juices and they will sweat a little bit and we'll have some really good flavors getting started. This smells amazing and uh, I can't wait for you to try this soup because it's just one of my favorites. And so that is the mushroom. You can see how wonderful they look. They've started to sweat they're a little bit thicker. If we let them go a little bit longer, they'll actually get a little bit of brown on them, which is mushrooms caramelizing and adding more sweetness to the dish. And while that's happening, while the mushrooms are finishing up, I'm going to add the farro. And the farro, what I want to do here is I want that farro to begin to toast just a little bit. I don't want to get it brown, I don't want it, but you'll smell it um, just kind of open up a fragrance and that will add depth to the soup. So we're going to let this cook just about three minutes. Now of course this is not a gluten-free recipe because of the farro. Uh, any grain will work in this recipe uh, and it's a nice texture to go with the soup broth. I would recommend quinoa or brown rice, or maybe you have another fa uh, favorite grain. And I'm going to pull this aside. You can begin to see some brown stuff forming on the bottom of the pot. And that is the fond. That is really good flavor. When we add the broth, then all of that caramelization is going to come up off the bottom of the pot. 
So we've got, this is a big recipe. We've got two boxes of stock. Um, next month, I'm going to teach you how to make an amazing vegetable stock from scratch. And we'll make my favorite winter soup called kanji. Uh, it is kind of the Eastern version of chicken soup for the soul. So you want to watch for that kanji recipe. Okay, now we've got some soup going there and we're going to finish up the ingredients. We want some bay leaf and I have two tablespoons of Italian seasoning, two tablespoons of soy sauce, a little bit of salt, and a lot of pepper, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's a quarter of a teaspoon, and we're gonna go for a half a teaspoon. And I think I've been counting, that must be 20 about there. So that's 40 grains of the pepper grinder, and we're good there with pepper and thyme. We'll add some grated carrot. Now this carrot I bought in the organic section at the grocery store, and it was already grated. I don't always do that, but when it's on sale and it's cheap, I'd rather do that than do it myself. We are going to add some better than bullion garlic. I'm going to line my tablespoon with just a little bit of olive oil. Then when I pick up the garlic base and turn it out into my soup, it pops right out and it doesn't stick much. So that's the better than garlic base, full of flavor. That one tablespoon is worth two cups of broth. The mushrooms have been sitting long enough now that they've absorbed as much water as they're going to absorb. So I'm gonna take the weight out and I'm gonna pour a good bunch of, the, well, all of that water into the soup because we don't wanna lose that flavor. You know, sometimes a all plant-based diet can be either all crunch and you feel like you're eating rabbit food, or it can be all uh, smoothies and you never feel like you actually get to chew anything. Well, this will give you a chance to chew something that's savory and has not only great taste, but great texture. And now all we need to do is cook it. You could do this on the stove and you would just have to let it cook for about 30 minutes at a low boil. I like the Instapot not because it's shorter, but I like it because I don't have to pay attention to it. We're going to turn it on on the soup setting for 30 minutes and set the pressure valve so it's closed. Dinner will be ready. Let's make some biscuits and let's, uh, or get some nice crusty bread and we'll be back for dinner, all right? So when the Instapot is finished, you wanna be sure and release the valve to let the steam out. And once the steam has released, you've got a beautiful soup ready to serve. So we're gonna put two scoops in each bowl. One, two, and at two scoops per bowl. This is a one cup ladle, by the way. And with two scoops per bowl, you're going to get four servings. Doesn't that look beautiful? And we're serving it with garlic, cheese, almond flour biscuits. So those, and those are gluten-free. So there you have farro and mushroom soup with garlic cheddar biscuits.
before we finish, I'd like to show you one of my favorite new finds. And in fact, these are in our Amazon store and you can find the link in the description. But these are supersized ice cube trays and they're designed specifically to store food in the freezer. How many times have you put something in the freezer and it just never comes back out? Well, this allows you to actually store in portion controlled um, hollows. You can store your food in perfect one portion containers. So this is a cup, which is a bowl of soup, another cup here for another bowl of soup, and then it's got a cover to put on, and that just goes directly into your freezer. It's called a Super Cube, S-O-U-P-E-R, Super Cube, and it's a great way to store leftovers and you know you'll use them because they're so easy to get back out. So check the link in the description. All right, that's it for today. I'm Chef Leander, to your health.